Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial of our foundation level sample paper discussions. We are continuing ahead with the set B and we are talking about the questions of chapter 5. Don't forget chapter 5 has 9 questions out of 40 and yet contributing smartly to the examination. And these questions are slightly going to be complicated than compared to the other chapters as there are a lot of theoretical concepts to be understood and remember at the same time. So let's look at the next question here, question number 35, which is talking about the risk level. Now, which of the following best defines the risk level? And in fact, if you recall your past understanding of the tutorials of the chapter number five, we understood that a risk level is determination of impact and likelihood, right? But at the same time, did you really explore it a bit more? So let's see the options. The option says a risk level is calculated by adding together the probabilities of all problem situations and the financial harm that results from them. Now, of course, they're talking about the two attribute, which looks very interesting to us, but they are talking about all problems, right? That is prob probability of all problem situation is not risk level risk is independent thing so there might be uh, you know many risks there and each risk has to be independently measured for its likelihood that is probability and it's not calculation of all problems and the financial harm financial harm is one of the impact which can occur due to a risk and I should not be just limited to that. There are different ways uh, it can impact me. Then I should be considering all that impacts which can happen if the risk really occurs. Moreover, the concentration is on the word adding together. Do we really add them together? No, that's not the uh, calculation which we do to define or determine the level of risk. Let's talk about B. The risk level is estimated by multiplying the likelihood of the threat to the system by the chance that the threat will occur and will change in financial damage. Again, one of the parameter financial damage, that's not always the problem. And they're only talking about likelihood. We are not talking about impact. Moreover, it's not the multiplication of it. Coming to the option C, risk level is determined by the combination of probability of an undesirable event and expected impact of that event looks quite generic as we are not talking about any one example of likelihood or any one example of impact we are just rather telling you that it is a combination of probability of an undesirable event to happen and the expected impact now expected impact can be one multiple but yes we consider everything and this is combination of that means we just combine it together not by just multiplying or adding it right so that looks pretty much good but let's be sure after reviewing option d the option d says risk level is the sum of all potential hazards to a system multiplied by the sum of all potential losses from that system again sum of all it's not about addition it's not about multiplication it's just the two combination a combination of two different parameters put together in order to uh, come to the conclusion after determination of a level of risk right so putting it up all together the right answer here is c risk level is determined by combination of the probability of an undesirable event and the expected impact of that event, what we call it as the level of risk. Let's jump into the next one. We're talking about question number 36, which of the following is most likely to be an example of product risk? First of all, you should be able to immediately differentiate in your mind that a product risk is different from project risk. Then what is the difference? When you talk about product risk, it is more about the software quality characteristics and when it comes to the project risk it is more of uh, the process which is making the product and uh, also another way around the project risk is a pre-release uh, risk that means it happens while we are making it during the process related to our actions activities which we do throughout the software development life cycle and product risk will be impacting the end user right the project risk impacts the process and product risk impacts the end user. So taking all these points into account, let's look at the options here. Option A says the expected security feature 
may not be supported by the system architecture. Now security feature is one of the quality characteristics and yes, does fit the purpose of product risk because if a product which is released into the market and is not secured in terms of data or credentials or personal uh, details of a user, it is a product risk because people will simply stop using your product and uh, you may lose the market. In fact, the entire product failure can happen. Let's compare with the other options also. B, the developers may not have time to fix all the defects found by the test team. Now this is impacting the process or impacting the release of the product. So it is all before that. So if a developer or the development team is not able to fix all the issues, that's the process impact and we, not, we may not be able to complete the end product on time or delivery to the market. So this is a project risk. C, the test cases may not provide full coverage of the specified requirement. As a part of our SDLC process, we execute the test cases or prepare the test cases and look forward to the coverage achieved. And this is again impacting the process, not the end user. So this is also project risk, does not happen post-release. Uh, this does not deal with the quality characteristics. D, the performance test environment may not be ready before the system is due for delivery. Now, most important thing to concentrate in this option is they are trying to trick you around with the word performance test. Because a lot of us have a good confidence that performance is a quality characteristic just like uh, security testing. And of course, if the performance is not good, uh, it's a product failure and that would be counted as a product risk. Now, the only difference here is read it as three words, not just two. It's not talking about performance test, it's talking about performance test environment, and this environment is not ready on time, could cause, of course, you know, due for, you know, delay the delivery time and all. So yes, it is again a part of the process, not taking from the quality characteristics. If they say performance parameters are not up to the mark, that's a product risk. Performance testing is not done. Performance environment is not ready. Performance environment is not available are all project risk, right? Now putting it all together, the right answer here is, A, the expected security features may not be supported by the system architecture, being a quality characteristics issue is a product risk. Rest all are project risk. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. We have two more questions remaining from this chapter and we'll be talking about that in our next tutorial. Stay tuned for that. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.